Hi, I'm Mike Slogan. I have a rather small workshop, so my approach to certain woodworking tasks has to be just a little bit different. There's no room for a full-size table saw or heavy woodworking machinery here, therefore most of my shop has to be portable and task-oriented. To break down sheet goods in my shop to build cabinetry, I find it easier to use a track saw to get my plywood into manageable pieces. Let me show you how I do it. Now my cutting table was designed to be portable. It's made up of a frame of 2x4s fastened together with countersunk carriage bolts. On pivot points, the table can collapse somewhat for transport to the job or just to get it out of the way in the shop, and it sits on a set of standard folding horses. I need to cut down a few sheets for a bookcase that I was asked to build. Now, This bookcase is just a little unusual because it has to fit under the roof line at an angle. So my first job is to lay out the material for the most efficient use of each sheet. I'll either draw or use SketchUp to figure out all of my cuts first. To begin cutting my parts for the bookcase, I use my drawing to mark off the panel. The Festool track saw slides on a special track that fits to the saw, and there are many different sizes available. They go all the way up to 16 foot long. They can even be joined together to make custom sizes. Now, The first time you cut with a new rail, it cuts the splinter guard. This way you can see exactly where the blade will cut through the material. There's also a depth of cut scale on the saw itself. It indicates the depth of the cut with or without the track. But the scale is metric. So rather than try to convert my imperial measurements to metric, I just use a metric stick rule to set up my measurements to begin with. Now I need to set the depth of the plunge cut first before cutting. You know, it's so precise I can put multiple pieces on my cut table separated by just small strips of quarter inch plywood and I don't have to worry about cutting through to the finish of the piece below. I use the back side of the saw track to lay out the panel cuts. It makes a very good straight edge. There's a pad running along the length of the track. It grips the material quite well and prevents the track from moving while you're cutting. It's very effective. However, if it's expensive material and you want to be absolutely precise, you can clamp the track to the table with special Festool clamps. Let me get the saw set up to cut my sheets. Well, I've broken down the sheet nice and easily in my shop here. I need to cross cut them. They're not all the same size. There's a couple that are a little bit under 48 inches. So we'll stack two of the sheets and cut them in half. That'll get me very close to the size that I'm eventually going to work with. The other two I'll rough cut to my long dimensions and then I'll cut the back of my cabinet once I'm finished getting these off of the top of the deck. Just makes my life a lot easier being able to break this down into the sizes that I'm going to be working with, especially in a small shop like this. Yeah, about 41, 42 millimeters. Remember that the rail is here, so we'll set this down to 42 millimeters. You want to double check it before it's plugged in. Bring it back up, get closer to 40 millimeters, I guess. There you go, that's going to cut through it without hitting the finished board that's underneath there. We're just going to cross cut these two. Let's get that right on the line. So let's get our hearing protection. Eye protection. Get this right on our cut line. Double check that with my square just to make sure that that 
sitting nice and square, hook up power, and dust extraction, and we're ready to cut those two in half. So if you have a small shop, don't have a large cabinet saw, or you're working out in the field, I find this to be the absolute easiest way to break down my sheet goods for assembly.